We go now to business. The developing eight countries, also known as the D8 Organizations for Economic Cooperation, says it will work towards increasing trade between member states from $100 billion currently to about $450 billion in the next five years. Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Zubairu Dada, who was at a lunch which saw the attendance of all the ambassadors of all D8 member states, including Bangladesh, Egypt, Iran, Indonesia, Malaysia, Pakistan and Turkey, says that the new secretariat will now equip member states to be able to work towards achieving sustainable development goals 1, 2 and 3. The outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic is a stark reminder of the need for nations to build and maintain sustainable health systems. It is as well a call for us to commit to the realization of health-related sustainable development goals. I am therefore delighted that the D8 established this office to respond more quickly and effectively to health and social emergencies as the one currently ravaging the world. That the commissioning of this office this morning would help drive our shared aspirations towards achieving affordable health care costs, including an inclusive social protection program and reformation of our health care systems. The commissioning of this office is this is very important that we take a fresh look on the health issues because we are fighting together. We want to uh, support our member countries in terms of health rates. We want to encourage and boost health rates within the member states. Uh, the eight countries has a combined economy of $4.5 trillion, 1.1 billion people. But the trade between the member countries just translates to about $100 billion, which is grossly inadequate. So we want uh, to ensure that we boost that trade within member countries to a tune of about 10% annually for the next five years, so that uh, we can be able to get a huge chunk from the $4.5 trillion economy uh, to boost the economy and then create jobs and then create employment within member states. And then also I'll be able to uh, boost the economy of uh, our member states. Joining us now to speak further on this is Dr. Ado Mohammed, the Global Program Director, D8 Health and Social Protection Program. Many thanks for joining us. Uh, the Minister of State uh, just talked about a more effective response uh, for health. And I'm um, looking health emergencies, especially in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. How do you think the new Health and Social Protection Program Secretariat can make this happen? Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon, Nigerians. Uh, for us and D8, uh, it's all about health and social protection. So when uh, the COVID-19 pandemic um, I came up, uh, we, uh, working with member states, convened a meeting of all the eight uh, countries. And um, what really I felt is that uh, it's important that uh, at that particular point, at this particular point in time, there's need for cooperation, there's need for collaboration, there's need for partnership, and there is also need to share knowledge and best practices. Um, so that meeting, which we had in April uh, this year, uh, is to agree on the way to go. Um, we all know that um, um, countries were all stretched at the peak of the COVID-19, and uh, each country needs support. So we came as a block uh, and agreed that there is need for us to work together to address the pandemic, to tackle the pandemic, and to see how we can minimize uh, the impact on the health system and our economy. So what we uh, actually did was to, um, uh, you know, uh, constitute two working groups. We had the working group on uh, resource mobilization. We also had the working group on uh, implementation monitoring. Um, resource mobilization is important. Uh, because we know that uh, um, at the peak of the crisis, quite a lot of countries um, were in need of even having some things like uh, equipment like ventilators, uh, masks, uh, uh, some consumables, 
and then some other items that are required, uh, you know, to address and tackle the pandemic. Uh, while some countries had excesses, some do not have uh, some of these items. And through that platform of resource mobilization, we are able to uh, support each other. Uh, for example, some of the ventilators that came into Nigeria at the initial stage of uh, the pandemic uh, came from a member country, which is uh, Turkey. You know, so we brought in some ventilators from Turkey, and some um, uh, consumables also came in from Malaysia, some from Bangladesh. So you can see the benefit of uh, uh, that meeting. Secondly, we also felt that uh, um, yes, resources due to the health system uh, could be uh, compromised and limited uh, because most of the countries had some challenges, you know, in terms of their finances. So we we work on the resource mobilization uh, to complement each other. Then, in terms of tracking. We also said, look, uh, there is need to have uh, implementation monitoring so that we can track all the agreement and resolution that are reached. And um, so far, so good. We've been able to put in place a monitoring mechanism to ensure that all the agreement consensus uh, that were reached, um, you know, within the countries that were agreed by the countries were implemented. All right. All right. So that is where we've, uh, so far, we've tackled the early stage of the pandemic. But post-pandemic, we believe that uh, the way to go is to not uh, universal health coverage. We have to have a resilient health system in place to address the pandemic in case of future uh, emergencies. And uh, we agree that uh, we need to boost our surveillance system. And uh, so we are working on a protocol uh, to have a joint effective surveillance system so that in the future, if there is any other pandemic that, or emergency that comes up, we will be able to tackle it. All right. So we are working so on a block. Do, uh, do you also, okay, away from um, health now, do you see more... Um, effective collaboration among the D8 member states, not just in health, but maybe social protection initiatives? Yes, uh, thank you very much for that question. Let's not forget the fact that uh, health goes beyond absence of disease or infirmity. Health um, is about overall well-being. And uh, when you look at health, there's link between poverty, heal health, and disease. So uh, for us, we are looking at health holistically, just beyond going beyond. We are not looking at health in terms of uh, just absence of disease. You know, we are looking at it in terms of complete overall well-being. Now, if you are looking at health in terms of well-being, then you also have to look at poverty. You also have to look at uh, disease, and then you also have to look at uh, um, um, hunger. You know, so uh, there, there is link between poverty, hunger, and disease. So, and uh, when you talk of, uh, you know. Um, if you, if, you, if you are going to prevent disease, you also have to eliminate poverty. Now, if you are eliminating poverty, that is where social protection comes into being. And that is why for us, we have a unique program that is about health and social protection. You know, unlike other programs that just to health specifically, where it's about health and social protection. Now, what are we doing uh, to tackle that? Um, we are working uh, with member countries to see how we can um, address the issue of poverty. Now, for example, if you look at... Uh, 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 poverty, even out of pocket expenditure itself is huge, you know. So what are we doing? We are working with member countries to mobilize resources so that we can address the demand side of healthcare intervention, which is, right. you know, preventing people from huge out of pocket expenditure uh, through universal health coverage. So working with, uh, for example, uh, National Health Insurance Scheme, we are working towards reducing the huge 70%, over 70% out of pocket expenditure. So that is the entry point when it comes to uh, social protection and health. But beyond that, similarly, we have uh, SMEs. So uh, we are working on uh, doing out a kind of mapping now on okay, SMEs. In, in, in the interest of time, um, small, and, and, medium to uh, Doctor, in the interest of time, we, we, we do get the picture that something definitely is happening uh, with the G8 as regards social protection initiative. Um, you, you talked about growing trade among the D8 member states by 10% for the next five years. Is this plan not too ambitious? Uh, we're talking about $450 billion. Yes, if you, if you look at it, uh, we have a combined economy of about $4.5 trillion. And um, the trade between member countries is just about $100 billion annually. That is grossly inadequate. Now, for an economy of $4.5 trillion, uh, if, you, if you are trading just about $100 billion, that is not acceptable. So what we are trying to do, um, and that, is, that includes health and other uh, sectors. So what we are doing now for health sector is we want to see how we can boost uh, the trading between member countries uh, to the tune of about 10% annually. 
Now, when you look at 10%, we are talking of um, annually about 11, 12 billion dollar increment annually for the next five years. You know, and uh, we believe that this is doable because, as it is now, we are discussing and on working with uh, uh, Islamic Development Bank. Uh, we are working on developing, working on uh, uh, revitalizing the health markets across the health value chain within the eight countries. We are going to build capacity of member states. We are going to um, identify what are those regulatory challenges that mitigate against uh, uh, trade between those countries. And then we are also going to see how we can work with member countries you know, uh, in terms of enhancing and then encouraging uh, trade within um, the member countries. There, there, are, those, there, there, there are those who say... Uh, there are those who say, sir, uh, that the cooperation by member states has not really met their expectations. Um, what should Nigerians expect from this uh, collaboration, um, this kind of economic union, so to speak? I, I think we've, we've made a lot of progress in the last 22 years that uh, D8 has been in existence. Uh, but uh, recognizing the fact that you cannot talk of economic prosperity without human capital, which is health and education, then it's important that um, um, I'm happy that uh, we're coming on board as a health and social protection program. And I'm also happy that uh, the government of Nigeria have uh, requested and host is hosting uh, this secretariat. So for Nigeria, uh, what, will, um, you know, um, what, I, what will be happening in the next uh, four to five years is we're going to support Nigeria in terms of um, for striking SDGs one, two, and three. That speaks of poverty, that speaks of hunger, and then speaks of overall well-being. Now, how do we do that? Uh, in specific terms, we are going to... Um, All right. Uh, Dr. Ado Mohammed, I, I want to say resources. thank you very much. I'm afraid that's the much time will permit us. Thank you very much for joining us on the news and talking to us about the plans of the D8. Thank you very much.